Yeah, so Chris just asked me, morning everyone, sorry, I should start with that. Um, Chris asked me to say a few words about what it's been like uh, working with Stack. So I, I first came across Stack sometime in the summer of 2018 when I met Chris at an e-assessment conference and was trying to learn about some of the different e-assessment tools uh, that were available. And we started using Stack in Durham sometime the following year. So everything that I'm saying is kind of um, been since sometime in 2019. Um, so I wanted to just kind of tell you what we've done so far, just so you know where, what my experience is with Stack. Um, so in Durham, um, our first year courses have uh, weekly problems that we ask students to turn in. Um, and traditionally, all of these were handed in as kind of paper assessments. You know, students would come in with their, their piece of work and it would get distributed to a bunch of markers and get marked and returned. Um, and our aim was to replace alternate homeworks with a formative online assessment uh, using one of the e assessment tools that are available. That's what we were hoping to achieve. Um, this was uh, made at a kind of a, a department level. So right from the start, I had departmental support. Uh, I was being asked by the department to investigate how this could be done, um, which certainly made some things quite easy because I was working with the backing uh, of the head of department, uh, the director of education and so on. Um, but we spoke to the relevant staff members from the courses that we were implementing this in throughout. So it wasn't just kind of forced on people. We tried to, to take into account um, different people's opinions on how this tool could be used in their courses. Um, and our plan was to roll this out across all our first year modules over the course of two to three years. That was our uh, initial estimate. Um, Obviously, uh, the COVID situation has potentially changed how, uh, how important that deadline was to make. And so we're now hoping to finish implementing across all our remaining first year courses for the coming academic year. So we've currently implemented this in about two roughly of our core modules and another one and a half of our auxiliary and service modules. Um, and just so you know how much kind of manpower this has taken, there have been roughly two teaching fellows who've been working on this since we started working with Stack. Um, so that kind of represents two people working on writing stack questions. Okay, so why did we choose to use stack uh, over some of the other alternatives? Um, the firstly, it was open source. That meant that we didn't have to agree to paying some large licensing fee to start investigating this. And also we thought that we had confidence that any materials we developed in stack were going to remain accessible to us for a long period of time. Uh, whereas with some commercial product, we might find that suddenly we no longer wanted to pay the full license fee and we could no longer use anything we'd written, for instance. Um, the other more probably more important point is something Chris already mentioned in his talk, that it's built on the computer algebra system Maxima. So Maxima wasn't actually something I was familiar with when I started writing stack questions, um, but it was kind of immediately obvious that having the backing of a full tried and tested computer algebra system really meant that Stack had uh, a robust and rigorous system for, doing, for making tests about things like algebraic equivalency um, that potentially some of the alternatives to Stack didn't have quite so much uh, rigor and I wasn't quite so confident that they were going to be able to do all of the things I wanted them to do. Um, and it also means you've got all the kind of tools at your disposal that you might expect um, with a system with a computer algebra system like Maxima. So that includes things like symbolic differentiation, symbolic integration. Those are tools that are built into Maxima and that you can immediately start using as a question author when you're writing stack questions. Um, it's also popular. What, why do I say that? Well, it meant two things. First, that it's well supported and is being continually developed. So um, Chris has, gone to many workshops and conferences that I've seen him at where he's been talking about the things that he's working on. Um, and so this isn't a tool that we feel is about to suddenly stop being developed. We've got confidence that uh, any uh, changes that might need to happen to the system are going to happen and that this is still being continually developed. And also that there's kind of a sense of community. There's a large group of people using Stack and that makes it much easier when, if, if, when I've needed to ask for help to find people that I can talk to. Um, and so, for instance, there's a, a project called Abacus, 
which is a, uh, a resource bank of questions that you can look at joining on an institutional level. Um, and so that's what I mean by there being a, a kind of a community around Stack. So those are all the reasons that we thought uh, Stack was the tool that we wanted to start exploring. And um, there was one challenge, however, um, Chris, sorry, I should say, I always think of Stack as being a Moodle plugin. Uh, Chris introduced it as a Moodle and Ilias plugin. I know nothing about Ilias, so I'm just going to ignore Ilias for the rest of my talk. Um, but in particular, Durham uses Blackboard rather than Moodle. And so that gave us a little bit of a, a complication about how we were going to be able to use uh, Stack, given that it lives inside Moodle, when we as an institution use Blackboard. But luckily, the team at Edinburgh had already come across this problem themselves. And so Chris and George from Edinburgh were able to kind of help point me in the right direction and give me access to a tool that they developed. And so you certainly can uh, use Stack, even if you're a, a Blackboard institution. And I'll say something else about that slightly later. Okay, so uh, what do students think about this? Is it worth your time? Because there certainly is some work here. Um, well, yes, it definitely is worth your time. Students seem to really appreciate the addition of e-assessment to these courses. So these are quotes that have been taken from some module evaluation questionnaires from our first year calculus module, which is where I first started uh, implementing Stack. Uh, overall, I love them. I appreciate the mixture between paper-based and e-assessment homeworks. And it works very well with half e-assessment, half marked work, as you can get feedback very quickly. So uh, this is something that you find in the literature if you start to look into e-assessment tools. You see people talking about the uh, importance of fast feedback as one of the reasons why you might want to use an e-assessment tool. And I thought it was really interesting that the students themselves picked up on that and with kind of no prompting identify that as one of the reasons why they really liked e-assessment. Um, and not they didn't just say they liked it. In fact, they then went out of their way to request that we added e-assessment into our remaining courses. Again, let me just note that that was done, uh, that was from a, a survey of the students taken before uh, the coronavirus hit. So they were already asking for e-assessment to be added to our remaining first year courses. Uh, and now with the coronavirus, that's certainly something that we'd be doing uh, regardless. So, the, the, first, the, the main kind of uh, issue we had in our first year of using Stack um, was with what's, what gets called in Moodle uh, question behaviors. I don't know the term that Ilias uses for this, so this may be the wrong language to use if you're using Stack through Ilias. Um, but in the demo that Chris just showed you a moment ago, uh, he, he wrote down his integral and he checked his answer and the, the system gave him some feedback. And then he changed his answer and he checked again and the system just immediately gave him some updated feedback. Um, so that's, that's one way of using Stack where your student can input an answer, check that answer and then immediately modify that answer. That might be the most suitable thing to do for a formative assessment, but you can also choose to uh, let the student submit one answer and, and keep that fixed until you give them feedback on the whole assignment. Um, so these are what are called question behaviors. So you can have interactive with multiple tries and adaptive mode, no penalties. So adaptive mode, as long as I'm getting this the right way around, adaptive mode is the, the type that Chris showed you where a student can immediately modify their answer and immediately resubmit it. Uh, and in calculus, we decided that we wanted um, if students were to have another go at the question, we wanted to re-randomize the question in the meantime. I didn't want any of the feedback that I showed them, if my feedback contained some, uh, some of the steps of the calculation, I didn't want them to be able to rely on that too heavily and just immediately type back in the correct answer. We used interactive with multiple tries, which meant the question was re-randomized uh, between the students' attempts. Uh, by using, in particular, I think, by using two different question behaviors across two different courses, we got plenty of uh, constructive feedback from our students telling us which of the two systems they preferred. Um, and it wasn't universal, right? We had some students that told us they much preferred it that the course in calculus used uh, the re-randomizing of the questions every time. And we had some students telling us that they really disliked the way that that happened in calculus and they much preferred the way it worked in linear algebra. So I think certainly this is something that you need to think about quite carefully when you start uh, using 
uh, an e-assessment tool like Stack is really think about the workflow that your students are going to go through, um, decide what's most appropriate. And maybe I think the thing that we got wrong was we didn't communicate clearly enough to our students why we'd made that decision um, and we weren't consistent across our courses. And so I think that's something that we need to uh, adapt for next year. Okay, so uh, here are five lessons that I learned. So I think this is the majority of the rest of my talk. So Stack and Moodle are robust. If you were concerned about using Stack and Moodle uh, for your course, our experience is that you don't need to be. We've had no problems with our Stack server that we're running in, du in Durham, uh, our Moodle server. Uh, we've not had the system go offline at any problem, at any point. Our calculus course was about 450 students and we were having uh, fortnightly assessments and we've never had a problem with the system going offline. So I've got no concerns about Stack and Moodle from that perspective. However, we did have some problems using uh, something called LTI, which is the way that you make uh, a Blackboard server to talk to a Moodle server so that for those institutions that are using Blackboard, you can use that same Blackboard login to get your users authenticated on your Moodle server and get any data that's coming, any grading data from the Moodle server to be passed back to the gradebook in Blackboard. It's certainly possible, it, it works. We had some problems with this in Durham. It was our own fault. We messed up our, our configurations, but it's certainly something that you need to just pay some attention to when you're setting that up initially. Of course, once it's set up, you should then have no problems going forwards. Uh, and I'm, sure I'm gonna put words in their mouth, but uh, I'm given that Chris and George helped me with this, I'm sure they'd be willing to provide some advice to anyone else that's going through this. And certainly, uh, I'm willing to from Durham's point of view as well. If you want to send me an email, I can talk to you in more detail about that if that's a problem you have. Okay, um, this is probably going to make more sense once you've actually started writing some questions. Um, but Stack has a feature for deploying some variants for its questions. So Chris said that Stack questions are often going to be randomized. Um, and when I first started writing Stack questions, I thought, well, as long as I'm careful, I write some good randomization. And that's it, job done. I didn't understand this feature at all. But what this feature does is it lets you as the question author um, produce a set of random variants, say 50 or 100 random variants, and then fix that list so that when students get given a question, it's always from this pre-randomized list, if you like. Um, and that's a really helpful way to check that your randomization is really doing the thing you think it is, check that all the uh, questions are sensible, all the answers that your system is producing are sensible and you don't have some fringe case uh, where suddenly everything looks really awful. So I strongly encourage you to use this question test and deployed versions feature. Um, oh, sorry, uh, in my speaker notes, I was looking half a slide ahead. So uh, once you've written a question, you'll see this button for question tests and deployed variants. That's what, I'm, that's what I was talking about. Um, I've had some problems with the Moodle, uh, the, the text editor that's built into Moodle with it adding its own HTML to the questions and this then messing up my questions and causing some problems. I've been told this doesn't affect all Moodle text editors, but if you are having some problems, if suddenly a question that was working seems to have stopped working, uh, I suggest that you look at the HTML for the question and check that it hasn't had some gobbledygook added to it by the Moodle server. Uh, and that's a button uh, here in the Moodle text editor. So this is just a screenshot from my Moodle text editor. Uh, and there's a little button that looks like a slash in some squared brackets that lets you go and have a look at the HTML for the code. Uh, and if you've ever written some HTML before, that might be a useful way to diagnose uh, if you're having some problems. Um, you can control the output of the tech. So if you want something to appear in a very specific way, that is possible. It took me a little while to work this out. So um, in particular in Durham, when we taught differential equations, we tend to use uh, primes for differential as opposed to something like dy dx or dx dt or something. Um, so here's a little command that says, uh, when you try to print x1, instead print the latex x prime of t. So if you've got some very specific way you want your output to be uh, displayed, that can certainly be done. Uh, and my, my kind of final tip is it's not always easiest. The, the best thing isn't necessarily to cook up 
some really complicated randomization scheme that creates some super duper question. Uh, sometimes two questions are quite similar and you might feel that they should be random variants of the same question, but it can often be, it's sometimes easier, particularly when you're, when you might want to give slightly different feedback, slightly different words to your feedback in particular, um, to just write them as two questions and use the Moodle quiz environment to randomize which question the student is given, as opposed to try to, as opposed to constructing a very complicated question that's trying to do all of the randomization within the question. Okay, so that's my final tip. Uh, I think I'm at 15 minutes, so I think I will stop there. <laughs>